Hello, who's ready for the vegan fitness panel? Got some lovely people here today for you. Chrissy Cavallo over here, Billy Simmons and Regan Smith, all gorgeous up here, don't you think? And um, it's good to see a bit of gender balance with the panel too, I'm liking that. And um, I just wanted to um, just go through a bit of a bio for everyone. So we're going to go through a few things just um, that everyone can answer and a few things specific to each of these people on the panel. And maybe we might have time for Q&A, we'll see how that goes. So, Billy Simmons in the middle, loving the man bun. Um, Billy Simmons is a professional natural bodybuilder power lifter, martial artist and vegan spokesperson. He was vegetarian for over 10 years and was always an avid advocate for plant-based nutrition. In 2010, he, became educated, he began educating himself on the cruel aspects of free-range eggs and the dairy industry. And he realized these practices didn't fit in with the reasons why he went vegetarian, which was for the animals and so he decided to go vegan. His past business and professional experience is extremely diverse. He's been an executive in corporate banking. He's also done stunt fighting as a Batman in, at Warner Brothers Movie World. And he is now the director of Eco Superfoods, which is the company behind leading nutrition brands Prana On and Kaya Health. Who's heard of Prana On? Yeah. The lovely Chrissy down the end. Chrissy Cavallo is a vegan fitness model competitor and is the current Australasian bikini masters champion, along with being an international online trainer and health coach. She has just opened her new vegan fitness studio at the Gold Coast at Burley, and she runs a meal prep business and is the author of a meal prep ebook as well. After becoming vegan at 38 years of age, Chrissy educated herself about plant-based health and wellness, and she decided to compete in bodybuilding fitness shows to prove to others and herself that vegans can not only survive, but also thrive. Lovely Regan to my left, sporting a great vegan tea there. Regan Smith, who you may know as Regan the Vegan, does anyone know that? Yeah. He's become an internet sensation from his Why I Went Vegan video, which creatively put a light-hearted spin on veganism. In early 2012, he became interested in improving his diet due to not eating well and compensating for his poor diet by exercising. After watching the documentary, Forks Over Knives, Regan went vegetarian and then quickly switched to a 100% plant-based diet. At the time, his eyes were open, being opened to meditation and to learning about living with kindness and compassion. And this led Regan to believing, that his vegan, believing in his vegan cause much more for ethical and environmental reasons, as well as the health benefits. Welcome all. Yeah. Okay, so everyone on the panel is quite fit. I'm not, but you're all fit in both senses of the word. And um, I just want to go through um, what sports or fitness activities that you enjoy to participate in and the things that help you remain active and fit. Um, I do a variety of uh, fitness exercises, so I, from weight training to maybe hard or heavy uh, bed. So weight training, I do calisthenics, which is a lot of body weight training on bars. I've also added this year some reformer pilates, and I just absolutely love doing cardio. A lot of people don't like it, but I love my morning walks on the beach because we live on the Gold Coast, so there's beautiful beaches there. So I really do a diverse range of uh, fitness activities. So I um, compete in a lot of different sports, mostly the sports that you're told you can't do as a vegan. So from bodybuilding to powerlifting, crossfit, martial arts, just the things that aren't typically associated with 
stereotype vegan, so I just put myself out there and I uh, also love to surf and, and do yoga as well. Um, and mine is weight training and yoga, is the, the big two. Don't do a lot of cardio. So there's a good example of some different things that you could add into your routine if you like. Um, I recently released a book on vegan athletes and Billy and Regan are both featured in that. It's an interview series with over 100 vegans from all over the world and, all over, and many disciplines. And um, out of the 111 people I interviewed in there, 77 of them still get asked about protein. Now I know everyone seems to get asked about protein, I'm sure a lot of you were going to ask that, so before you even think about it, we're going to cover it right now. So um, I still can't comprehend that people don't understand that plants have protein. And um, you can tell we've got protein covered here, hey, do you reckon? And um, so I want to ask everyone, what's your favourite food source for protein? So mine is tempeh, especially from Indonesia. Uh, beans and greens, definitely. Um, yeah, mixed beans as well as nuts and seeds. I like whole food, plant-based protein. Um, do I comment on... I think it's a culture thing. I think that uh, a lot of different people, um, the problem is they don't know that plants have got protein and they don't know how to make foods that incorporate them, so restaurants, things like that. But my favourite source, I have to say I'm biased, I'm going to say prana on. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, my main sources are beans, greens and grains, and when I'm comp prepping, I use prana on as well. Does Chrissy get a gold star for that one? <laughs> mentioning that. <laughs> Okay, and um, so diet's really important, and a lot of people would even say it's more important than exercise, and I'd just like everyone to go through um, their diet philosophy. So, um, in case you're not aware, vegan can, can cover a few other things as well. So some people can be like raw vegan, whole foods, um, paleo vegan, and I'd like everyone to share where your philosophy is with your diet and why that works for you. Uh, well, I've been working as a personal trainer and fitness instructor for uh, since 2010, so about six, almost seven years. And uh, I've, before I was vegan, I was in the fitness industry. I was growing up with that mentality of you know cut carbohydrates um, and that high fat, high protein diet. And when I went into veganism, I still had that mindset. And so I was eating a lot of fats, and I was having a lot of avocados, I was steering clear of fruits and sugars and all that sort of thing. It wasn't until, I think, early this year, uh, I went to a high carb, low fat diet um, and a predominantly whole foods diet as well. So uh, like the, the beans and all that sort of stuff, um, oats and things like that. And so the most, uh, the best that I feel uh, is on the starch solution, which I've uh, been researching about Dr. Michael McDougall, which is a starch-based diet, so things like potatoes, oats, uh, uh, oats sorry, starch-based foods is your predominant diet, things like rice, and then um, added vegetables, non-starchy vegetables, like your cruciferous vegetables, uh, I think it's orange, green, and yellow vegetables as well and then fruits and then accompanied by a lower percentage of fats uh, like your avocados, your olives um, and basically no oils um, or, or refined foods and that's that's the majority of, of what I eat if you've seen my Instagram it's not all that I eat you just see like the vegan the vegan cakes and all that sort of stuff uh, you would have seen me down at the stalls getting deep fried noodles and things as well so um, predominantly whole foods and then yeah whatever gets cooked up is, that, is also good as well so I've tried a range of different vegan uh, takes on, on diets out there, so the zone or paleo, um, high protein, low carb. The one that I find resonates the best for me um, is the macrobiotic, uh, and not raw till fall, but the warrior diet style, which you're eating sparingly during the day and a little bit more at night, which is much more in tune with your circadian rhythms as well. Um, and probably the, the meal that personifies that type of uh, nutrition is the dragon bowl. So if anyone's traveled throughout Asia, a dragon bowl includes foods that are fermented, uh, includes raw foods, it includes cooked, warmed foods, steamed. So there's a whole combination on the one uh, bowl or plate and each of those, um, there's a lot of different nutrients that 
uh, within that meal that are particularly hard to get um, from a lot of nutrition. So they've got things like seaweed and, um, and probiotics and um, a lot of protein as well. So typically they've got tempeh and beans on there. So that's probably my favorite way to eat. Um, my, my diet, which I get asked all the time what my macro, macronutrients are, I'm predominantly high carb, low fat, but very uh, a moderate protein. So my protein isn't low especially when I'm coming into a competition. I eat what I call um, a first food, second foods, um, which if you can pick it and eat it, that's a first food. If you can pick it, dry it, freeze it, that would be a second food and so forth. So a lot of processed foods go right up to 15th foods. I, I usually don't touch those. Generally, maybe um, once a blue moon, I might have something that's um, processed. I try to stay away from it though, so we don't really have whole foods. And I'd like everyone to share um, just what you would eat on an average day. So just average. Um, I've actually changed a lot since I've been vegan, but I predominantly have um, more fruit, um, lots of potato, uh, and no, it does not make you fat. <laughs> I'm probably leaner now than I've been, um, I'm 43, and I'm probably leaner now than I was in my 20s. So again, the whole food, so papaya, I love, I have a papaya bowl every morning and with strawberries and so forth in it, uh, potatoes, greens, beans and um, a little bit of grains. So I usually, every meal for me has got an even balance of the different macros, so I'll have, each meal have some protein, have some carbs, have some fats. So just before I came here I had a protein shake with coconut milk um, and some blueberries and some nuts. So my meals all rotate um, either a whole food sort of style meal or something like that um, that has got those equal components um, i'll have smoothies i'll have make my own kind of crude version of a dragon bowl i'm not that talented so i eat out a lot so i probably um, know where, where i can find good food as well so um, today I've been having spring rolls, veggie balls, uh, deep fried noodles, <laughs> but on an average day, uh, yeah, back tomorrow, I usually have in the morning, I'll have oats and berries and I'll get a, a mixture of nuts and I'll crush them in a coffee grinder and I'll sprinkle them over like a breakfast bowl and I'll just mix that with water. Um, and then I'll have, I'll have fruits in the morning as well, so bananas and kiwi fruits and things like that. And then snacking throughout the day, usually just fruit and nuts. And then for lunch and uh, lunchtime and, and dinner, I'll either have a mix of potatoes. I love potatoes; they do not make you fat at all. Um, I've got a convection oven that there's a plug-in sitting on the kitchen counter that is just for potatoes. It's got potatoes, you know, sweet potatoes that just go around the clock. Um, and then I usually have either for lunch or dinner, I'll have a mixture of beans, greens, cruciferous vegetables, things like that as well. So you can see vegans know how to eat and we're not deprived in any way, well, no matter what other people say. Um, I, I just um, a lot of people think that you need to have a lot of supplements on a vegan diet. They think they're going to um, miss out on particular things. Um, if you weren't here for the um, health and well-being panel, we covered a lot of specific um, nutrients and vitamins and minerals. Um, but I'd just like to ask everyone um, what supplements you take, if you take any, and why. Uh, the only one I take is vitamin B or B12. I haven't done enough research on that though. That was just one that I've heard other um, vegan doctors and nutritionists talk about. Um, I missed the nutritional panel, so I'll have to catch up on that. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the only one I take. Yeah, so I take a B12 sort of every other day when I'm home. And uh, supplements are either to address a deficiency or for convenience. So um, if I, if I determine whether I'm deficient in something based on what I'm eating at the time or how I'm feeling, then I might throw something in. Um, I use the products that, that Prana On has, um, protein and, and pre-workout, intra-workout, uh, the greens. I find they're really uh, helpful for my recovery. Um, if you're taking supplements, the other, the other goal as well is to optimise performance, so that's where they step in for me. Um, currently I don't take any supplements. I've had in five years one um, B12 shop and I haven't checked where it is, but I feel fabulous, so might have to do a check eventually. Um, I'm a supplement free athlete, it's very unusual in the bodybuilding industry. Uh, most people are on something to either shred fat or recovery or 
BCCAs and all these things that I've avoided because I really wanted to see my sport where I could get being 100% uh, natural and I didn't feel like my diet was deficient so I didn't need to supplement it. However, I'm about to embark the next um, two competitions I'm doing with a supplement program from um, a trainer that I'm working with and I'm not impressed by what I probably may, it's, it's drug free and it's going to be all within my belief system um, so there won't be any carcinogens and artificial sweeteners but I want to actually see what it does to my body and I don't think it's going to be a positive effect but I'm up for the experimentation. So people are always um, trying to find ways to build muscle, to lose weight, or get ready for a competition. Chrissy, in particular, does a lot of competitions. And um, when I was um, editing, compiling my vegan athletes book, one of the things I learned um, from that was that muscle burns fat. So um, I'd like if you guys could share something that you think one of the most or two of the most important tips that people may not know in regards to say fitness or losing weight or putting on muscle, whatever you want. I think everybody here knows it and it's that diet is 95% of what you do. Exercise is five or movement more specifically. Um, working in the gym industry, I try and encourage people um, just to move. So a lot of people, if they want to say lose weight or get fit, they, they sort of um, think that they have to stand on a treadmill or go to a gym. And I, I wake up at about 4, 4.30 in the morning. Um, I work on a Monday morning. I absolutely love it. That's what I like to do. But I get people coming in in the mornings and they come in and they, I say, how do you feel? And they say, oh, you know, pretty good for a Monday. And it's just crap. If you don't want to be there, don't do it. Um, and it's my job to, you know, get people to, to be there. And that's what one of the ladies said. And that's not my job. My job is to get people doing what they enjoy. Fitness is a part of that, but you don't have to d look at it so conventionally of um, the treadmills and the weight training. I personally love weight training. I've been doing it since I was a teenager. Um, I've done other training and I just, I've always come back to that purely because I enjoy it. But I think um, diet being the biggest one and the fact that going to a gym is not the only way to, to get in shape and feel good. Um, do whatever you enjoy because I think consistency is the most important thing. So if you find something you enjoy, you don't need motivation, you don't need discipline. Just just move in a way that you enjoy. It might be tennis, soccer, futsal, anything like that. Um, and go vegan, eat your vegetables. In regards to putting on muscle, um, when I first started competing in bodybuilding and I decided I wanted to go further with it after my first competition, I realized that I wasn't going to become a better bodybuilder by bodybuilding, I became a powerlifter. And a lot of guys I meet, they want to put on muscle, they may be toying with the idea of going vegan, um, and, or they, they actually are, and they want to know how to put on more muscle mass. And the simple answer for that is to get stronger. So um, if you're backing up what you're doing with nutrition, then uh, you're doing the movement um, of strength training is going to really pack on muscle. So I trained for five years, um, squatting, deadlifting, bench pressing, three or four times a week, uh, just around the corner at UQ University, while I was in a bodybuilding training. So I was competing for bodybuilding, but I was also competing as a powerlifter. And that was the only way naturally that I was able to put on the muscle mass. And um, so many guys I meet just want to do bicep curls and, um, and get bigger. They don't realize that structural muscle comes about by doing compound movements and doing them for a long time, over a long amount of years, getting stronger. And getting stronger is a forward indicator of then getting muscle mass. So if you're getting stronger, then the muscle will come. Um, I'll talk about uh, a little bit of both, fat loss and muscle. Uh, I think it's really important, especially for, I deal with mainly women um, online, but I think it's really important to do some form of body weight work. Um, that way, if you are increasing your muscle mass or muscle tone, it's what women prefer call it, muscle tone, um, that will also keep you leaner all year round. So um, doing a, a little bit every day, we're designed to actually move and this day and age a lot of us sit down. I sit down all day as an online coach so for me it's really important to get up in the morning and move um, and I prefer cardio and it's a really good time because you've got nothing, for me I do it fasted and I've got nothing digesting in my stomach from the night before, it's all digested 
so I can walk that little bit faster. And then I do my weight training after I actually work. So again, if I'm sitting all day, it's a really good way to keep the body moving, keep the lymphatic system going. And it's really, I don't think you could be 100% healthy if you're not moving your body. Um, Regan, you're a gym, gym instructor, you're, you mentioned that before, and you've just finished yoga training, or about to, or about, yeah. And um, so if someone wants to get trained by you, um, where can they go? What should they expect, um, other than just your vegan puns? Uh, yeah, so I've been living up the Sunshine Coast for sort of half my week, um, but my house collapsed, my transport failed, as you would have saw. So I was living in my van, I was travelling up there, so... I am bound to Brisbane now, um, and I'll be doing group fitness classes uh, in New Farm Park. So it's I've only just set up the website, but I still am going through the process of getting permits and things like that. But it'll be a vegan group fitness. Uh, it's based on uh, resistance-based cardio, so doing body, a lot of bodyweight work on resistance bands um, and just yoga mats. And yeah, I'll be setting that up hopefully within next week or two depending on when the permits come through um, and that'll be run through my website which is just Regan the Vegan. Yeah so I'll, I have to wait till I get more information on the website and, and get the park permit but yeah if you're interested um, it'll be whole whole body fitness space um, and it's uh, yeah I'll have to I'll have more information on the website but uh, yeah depending, depending on these permits. Stay tuned. Um, Chrissy, you just um, opened your vegan fitness studio in Burley on the Gold Coast. And can you tell me why you decided to open this studio? Um, what people can expect if they visit you? And what this response has been like so far? Um, the studio came about because I was looking for a premise for um, to work at it from my online coaching. And working from home, I kind of like outgrown. And the premises I got had all this extra space. And I had a lot of inquiry from some local clients from Brisbane and from Gold Coast and so forth um, coming to see me face to face rather than online. And I didn't really want anyone at home. So when I moved into the premise, I thought I would change it into a gym plus be my own um, place to train. And um, with everything I do, I go from a small ID to something out of control. And I'm a qualified aerial fitness instructor, so I added my aerial hammocks in there put a big calisthenics rig in there and <laughs> and I've outgrown even the little space. As far as opening, I run just a couple of aerial classes and calisthenics classes a week. I haven't um, gone out to promote it and the website goes up in about a week. Uh, so it's slow at the moment, which is good because I've just come back from Hong Kong from competing over there and I have a lot of other comps coming up. So I've decided to add personal training because that's the biggest thing people have been asking for, one-on-one -on -one training with me. And of course that would then entail um, a meal plan and whether it be for bodybuilding um, or fat loss. And I do get a lot of clients that are competing um, in Brisbane and they're coming for posing classes and so forth. So, so yeah, so it's early days and once the website gets up I can really like spread it out a little bit more. Uh, Wade from Vegan Business Network, he just did a really good post on promo video for Chrissy and that's on your YouTube what's the YouTube site? Um, vegan. vegan fitness model. So her um Chrissy's vegan fitness model YouTube channel is a really good promo video so it actually shows what the studio looks like and a few of the girls on the aerial yeah, aerial fitness on the air, doing the aerial fitness stuff so yeah that was pretty it looks really good. Um, and um, I just wanted to mention, so Regan said he's going to do something around the corner, um, Chrissy's down the coast. Um, do any of you know local Brisbane people that are vegan fitness trainers, stuff like that? I know um, Stephanie Bellier from Move and Improve Fitness, she's one of the people also in my book. Um, does anyone know anyone who wants to give a shout out? Yes? Personal best in Tawong, David Rutherford, mm -hmm. vegan personal trainer. So there's one. Hope to get a bit more interaction from the crowd, to be honest. But maybe that's your homework for the weekend. I think let's all go and find out a local vegan um, a fitness instructor or something in, in your local area. Um, 
Um, you may have heard, hopefully, of the great new vegan protein powder and fitness supplements brand Prana On. Um, they've got a store here today, so if you haven't checked it out, it's just through those doors there. Um, Billy, I'd like for you to share um, why you decided to release the vegan protein in an already saturated protein powder market and what makes you stand out from the crowd. So the, the fitness community, um, when I was more active in it, competing, particularly in bodybuilding, it was really starved of consciousness and, and prana is a, a word that, that really epitomizes that um, coming from um, the ancient lang language Sanskrit. So prana means energy or life force. And a lot of people in the fitness community, as you'll know, particularly when they're competing, they don't have a lot of prana. So they're always, um, you know, strung out, dieting, hating life. So I'd see that and I thought there's got to be a better way and a lot of them were having animal-based products and I thought that was part of the problem. So prana on, um, just to explain what that term means. So literally our products turn people's prana on and it's also what uh, it's crafted with, which is plant-based, raw, alkaline, natural and gluten-free organic nutrients. So prana on is what it does and prana on is what it is. And the whole idea was to introduce um, a mainstream brand that had the attributes that I believe in, so vegan brand, um, we produce it using 100% renewable energy as well, and bringing that to the mainstream, so bringing it to uh, a fitness community that was starved of consciousness and health, they might look really good, but they don't feel good, so the idea was how can we sort of change that, so um, our biggest customer base is the mainstream, we wanted to create a brand that would appeal to people uh, out there that aren't necessarily vegans, but a bit more open-minded and maybe introduce them to what it all means. So if we could do that in a compelling way, then they'll be more inclined to look at other ways that they could become plant-based and, and ultimately vegan. Um, and what are you working on next with Prana? Where, where are you heading next? Yeah, I just got off the plane from Hong Kong. So, um, so plant-based and vegan is uh, spreading throughout the world, which is really cool. And so um, the brand is a global brand now, so I've been doing the rounds. Um, and the other things I've been doing, I've been doing a high schools tour um, around Australia called Strength and Kindness. So speaking to high school students about vegan and about um, the ethics behind food, which is really rewarding as well. And a whole bunch of other things. Could be here for half an hour just hearing about Billy's adventures this year. Um, and that um, tour you said you're doing that was for a group called In Defense of Animals. If you haven't heard of them, check them out. Um, and I'd like to ask all of the panel, starting with Chrissy, um, what do you think your biggest strength as is as an athlete? Vegan athlete. I know my biggest strength has been um, really putting awareness out there in my sporting industry, which is bodybuilding and the fitness industry. Um, because only just a few years ago, if you were a vegan athlete of any sort, um, you weren't going anywhere. <laughs> so this year it, it, itself, I have won the uh, uh, Arnold Bikini Masters in Melbourne. And I also won the recent Australasia. And these women that I compete against have been in the sport, some of them for uh, 15 years or so, because Masters means over 35s. And I have this year, my online clients that are from around the world, 50% have been non-vegans. So that's something really uh, shocking for me. I like to really work out the exact statistics. But the majority of my clients are now coming over to a plant-based lifestyle but want to do it healthy because they know that I promote more the whole food. So um, I think that has been um, a real advantage coming out because when I launched into this, a lot of people said, you're not going to get much business just doing vegan meal plans. You know, you're not, <laughs> you're not going to be, you know, you, 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 you're going to have to do something else. And I just went, well, I'm not writing any meat plans. I'm not doing, adding any dairy not, because that's not my belief. So I've actually went the opposite way and really stunned a lot of people and peers in my industry. So it's been an amazing journey and it's just a roller coaster ride. It keeps going. So with the term, I don't actually like the term vegan athlete. I think that that 
implies that you're at a disadvantage. Um, so I think my point would be just be a good athlete. If you're going to compete, do it well, do a vegan, and let that speak for itself. You don't need to be the best vegan athlete out there against other vegans. We're all sharing the same philosophy. Go and be legitimate in your craft and what you do, and then people will come to you and say, well, what are you doing differently? So I prefer to put myself out there in the mainstream and, um, and let my results speak for themselves. And when people inquire, their minds are open and then you can in, in, engage with them in, in conversation and educate them. Um, so I think that um, just be legitimate in your own right as an athlete. Yeah, totally agree. Um, I think breaking that stereotype as well um, of, of what a vegan is, like a lot of mainstream people, and I definitely did before I went vegan, um, have a picture in your head of what that's going to be. Um, and I definitely take the approach of just be it, um, exactly that. So. Um, I think uh, I used to take the approach of trying to sell it, so telling people why they should, rather than just being it and making it something that they want. Um, and that for me has uh, been effective. And then, yeah, puns as well is always great. That, that's a, a good tip, Regan, actually. And, um you know, I think you lead by example is the best the best way to educate people and inspire people. And if, if you're doing something and they respect it or they, you know, you they look a certain way that they like, that you look a certain way that someone would like to, that can really inspire people to um, take on some of the things you're doing. And um, everyone here on this panel, um, they're very positive in the way that they actually um, interact online and they promote veganism. And some people aren't. And um, so I just wanted to really mention that. And I'd like to, um, just to ask um, what people, what are the best ways that you've found to positively promote veganism to others? Oddly, sense of humour. Um, yeah, so I made a video back in May that got up to, I think it's up to about 5.1 million views, which was on Facebook, and it was literally just me making puns about food, um, and it was so much fun to make, it did cost me $120 worth of groceries at the time, but um, otherwise very fun, but from that, it was, it was ridiculous the amount of messages I got from people who around the world were wanting to go vegan because they'd seen that video. Um, and I had, it wasn't saturated with information, but it was, I suppose, a very light-hearted um, take on it, but it had meaning that I put into, into the video as well. And um, I think that was it, just to, to be myself and to, to be having fun um, within veganism was uh, sort of opened up to a new branch of people that hadn't considered it. Um, and then after that, uh, give them more information. And I think one of my yoga teachers uh, was telling me a, a good phrase of advertise or market to the ego and then feed the soul. Um, and show people you know, what it is that they want, how they can benefit from it. And then if you pull the string of veganism long enough, you see what's going on and, and you're in it for the right reasons as well. I think the movement needs a few angry people out there. I will say that that's not my approach, but they have a role to play. I think those people are out there fighting the good fights. So there are people that are really vocal about things. They are posting a lot of things that are really challenging for, for people to see, but we need that too. So my approach isn't like that. I go out and educate and I um, put myself out there as an example. I choose to compete in different things and, um, and also create solutions as well. So part of Prana was creating a solution. So I'm a little bit more focused on that side of things, but I respect anyone that's going to get put themselves out there and, and go hard on, on um, what is you know an absolute atrocity out there. So um, just not my approach, but I'm, I'm happy they're out there. So you guys are angry vegans out there, I love you too. So. <laughs> Um, my motto is inspire change and that's what I do. I, I like to uh, get out there and show what's possible and inspire people that they can do it. If I can do it in my 40s with dreadlocks and things like that um, that are usually against uh, some people then anyone can do it and so it's more of a positive message in um, the angle that I, that I prefer to take. So just say one more thing, um, one quote that I really heard and I loved was be the vegan you wish that you have met. Um, there's so many reasons why people go vegan um, and the way I picture it is like that, that basketball team or any sporting team, if you only had three point shooters and you didn't have anyone under the post, it's like we all have our part to play 
and everyone's going to resonate with something different. So I see a lot of people say, oh, that person's not vegan enough, or that person's too angry, or they're too much of an activist, or they're not enough of an activist. Um, that's just crap. It's do whatever you do, and the people who resonate with you will resonate with you. Good tips there for the panel. And um, I'd just like to round off the um, session um, with everyone just sharing top tip or top tips for others um, who are trying to focus on their fitness goals, starting with Chris. Um, top tips would be just to move more, really. Uh, love your body, love who you are, and no matter um, how big, strong, small we are, if you move that little, bit, a little bit more, I think that's, that's what we all need to do. Yeah, definitely find the movement that inspires you as well. Usually it's the one that you dreamt of when you were young. So if you, for me, I dreamt about being like, you know, Chuck Norris or Arnold Schwarzenegger or Batman and, and I've kind of lived that reality, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I go by the cliche, do what you love. Um, if you've got that, um, as a personal trainer and fitness instructor, I, I don't like the word discipline because I think it's got a negative connotation of forcing yourself to do something you don't want to do. Um, so I usually recommend consistency, and if you're doing what you love, you don't need motivation, you don't need, you know, standard discipline. Very good, and I hope everyone in here has learned a lot today, and if you've learned something new, please pass it on to someone so they know something new as well. And um, I hope they've also inspired you to become more active every day or just starting from now to um, use some of these tips and their successes towards your own fitness goals. And um, I'd like, um, if you would like to find out any information or more information about any of the people here, just have a look at their website. They're all on social media. Um, see Chrissy down the coast at her vegan um, studio. Prana on um, just out the fr out, um, through the doors. So there's a stall there, and just you know follow um, Regan on Instagram and YouTube, and have a look in his video if you haven't seen it yet. Um, have a look, share it to someone else, and um, I'd like everyone to thank the panel today.